Survival Island, 2002. Written, produced, and directed by David and Scott Hillenbrand. Starring Jamie Presley, Nicholas Brendan, and Ed Gale. A group of rowdy college students venture to a small island to participate in a scavenger hunt. Unfortunately, an ancient evil has other plans for them, and it doesn't involve jello shots. My review for King Cobra has become the second most viewed video on my channel, which led me to wonder, did the Hillenbrands learn from their mistakes when they made their second film? I also needed to see it because it features a possessed piñata, which is absolutely ridiculous. This is very much a college film from the 2000s. Think Road Trip and American Pie. The characters aren't written as obnoxious stereotypes, fortunately, which the film easily could have resorted to. To the Hillenbrand's credit, this film actually sets everything up with a satisfactorily mythical origin for the piñata that easily could have been phoned in. Like King Cobra, this film also features a surprising number of faces from the small screen, including Jamie Presley from My Name is Earl, Nicholas Brendan from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Nate Richard from Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and Garrett Wang from Star Trek Voyager. Last but not least, Ed Gale portrays the killer piñata. No stranger to playing in human roles, his body of work includes Howard the Duck and a couple of the early Child's Play films. Gale really brings his experience to the table in this film helping the Hillenbrands create a legitimately imposing demonic entity who racks up quite a body count over the course of the film. Like King Cobra, the creature effects were once again handled by the Chiodo brothers. Unlike King Cobra, however, this film features ridiculous amounts of on-screen deaths that will satiate any slasher fan's bloodlust. The creature was also portrayed using bad CG due to their fears that it just wasn't scary enough with the entity straight up turning into something out of one of the Doom games at times. But even big budget films had pretty clunky CG in the early 2000s, and we're talking about low budget horror here, so it's totally understandable, and almost charming in a nostalgic way now. Verdict recommended. I was hard on the Hillenbrands when I reviewed their first film, but I'm beyond happy that they were able to learn and improve their craft within a couple of years, and then release something this thoroughly entertaining afterwards. That concludes this week's review. If there's any obscure sci-fi horror film you'd like to suggest, feel free to leave a comment below. Make sure to tune in next time for another thrilling low-budget adventure.